Good morning. Welcome on July 16th to morning prayer. I'm Evan Gertner, a pastor at our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. Today on July 16th in the church calendar, we commemorate Ruth, that Old Testament driven hero of faith that followed Naomi. It said, where you go, I go. Your God shall be my God. Uh, we're going to start today with Psalm 21. O Lord, in your strength, the king rejoices. And in your salvation, how greatly he exalts. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. For you meet him with rich blessings. You set a crown of fine gold upon his head. He asked life for you. You gave it to him, length of days, forever and ever. His glory is great through your salvation. Splendor and majesty you bestow on him. For you make him most blessed forever. You make him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord and through the steadfast love of the Most High. He shall not be moved. This is a, a psalm that gives praise and thanks to God for his majesty and blessings. May you find this psalm to be a part of your own prayer, that you are able to give praise and thanks to God for his majesty, his blessings, and his gifts to you. That you may echo the words of verse 5. His glory, now think of that as yours, your glory is great through his salvation splendor and majesty God bestows upon you. We're going to now look at Galatians chapter 4 and see the ability that Paul has to draw a line between Hagar and Sarah and the covenant that God has made through faith and gifts of grace. Brothers, I entreat you, become as I am, for also I have become as you are, you did me no wrong. You know it was because of a body ailment that I preached the gospel to you at first, and though my condition was a trial to you, you did not scorn or despise me, but received me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus. What then has become of the blessing you felt? For I testify to you that if possible, you would have gouged out your eyes and given them to me. Have I then become your enemy by telling you the truth? They make much more of you, but for no good purpose. They want to shut you out that you may make much of them. It is always good to be made much of for a good purpose, and not only what I am present with you, my little children, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. I wish I could be present with you now and change my tone, for I am perplexed about you. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, while the son of the free woman was born through promise. Now, this may be interpreted allegorically. These two women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and cry aloud, you who are not in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be no more than those of the one who has a husband. Now you, brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. But just as at that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, so also it is now. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son. The son of the slave woman shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So, brothers, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. We are born of promise. That is the point that is being made here. The child that was born of Sarah was when Sarah was past age of bearing children. And the only way Sarah could give birth to a child named Isaac was through the promise of God. Abraham had been given a promise. But according to the flesh, he had a child with Hagar. But according to the flesh, all that child could do is be according to the flesh. The child of Isaac, Isaac could be according to the promise. I want you now to consider your life. Is your life devoted as a slave to the law, trying to be perfect always, so that you are well received and respected and get what you deserve? According to the flesh, that's what you'll get then, just according to the flesh. But are you a child of promise who knows that everything you have is not something you've earned or deserved or 
have as a reward for the hard work you've done, but everything you have from God is a gift of grace and mercy. You are a child of promise. A child of promise lives for eternity in the new Jerusalem. A child of the flesh always remains just of the flesh. Let's hear now about Ruth. All right, so Ruth of Moab. She's the subject of the biblical book that bears her name. It's an inspiring example of God's grace. She was a Gentile. God made her the great grandmother of King David and an ancestress of Jesus himself. A famine in Israel led Elimelech and Naomi of Bethlehem to immigrate to the neighboring nation of Moab with their two sons. The sons married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. But after 10 years, Elimelech and his sons died. Naomi then decided to return to Bethlehem and urged her daughters-in-law to return to their families. Orpah listened to Naomi's advice, but Ruth refused, replying with the stern words, Where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. And after Ruth arrived in Bethlehem, Boaz, a close relative of Elimelech, agreed to be Ruth's redeemer. He took her as his wife, and Ruth gave birth to Obed, the grandfather of David, thus preserving the Messianic line. Ruth's kindness and selfless loyalty toward Naomi and her, fa her faith in Naomi, God has long endured to the faithful and redounded to God's praise for his merciful choice of one so unexpected. Let's pray now that we may have that kind of faith. Faithful God, you promised to preserve your people. You save your inheritance using unlikely and unexpected uh, vessels and extending the genealogy that would bring about the birth of your beloved son. Give us the loyalty of Ruth and her trust in the one true God, that we too might honor you through our submission and respect and be counted among your chosen people by the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord and the Holy Spirit who reign together with you now and forever. God's peace be with you. Have a wonderful day. Rejoice that you are a child of promise.